Oh, hello. Welcome back. Happy Monday. How are you doing? How are you doing? Why weren't you here on Friday? What's a wrong with you people? What's a wrong? What's a wrong with the people? They weren't on here on a Friday when I added the tooth. It goes upside down in the chair for half of the day. Jesus, Jesus. I know. It was insane. Anyways, yes, it wasn't your fault. It was my dentist's fault. Who had me in a chair for four hours on Friday. Yeah. Four hours. Filled my head full of Novocaine, which, psh, I mean, that's just a cheap drug. And there ain't no way I'm going to do that on purpose again. Drilled the crap out of my face. Put in this horrible tasting goop. Goop? That ugh, spread out everywhere. Does, does goop ever taste good? I've had some pretty good tasting goop once in a while. How are you doing, Edward? Where have you been? Why weren't you here on Friday? Because uh, I got a message from uh, oh. El Presidente <laughs> saying, uh, my face is frozen. My face is a glacier. Yes, my face was a glacier. It was like a frozen pig's ass. Frozen is pig's that? ass. I don't know. Does, I don't know. Is that okay to say on the internet? I don't I, know. I, Anyways. I, you know what? You, the, uh, I'm sure some, 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 a uh, 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 a group of animals are going to complain here. <laughs> that you're, That's right. Like they're going to hashtag me to me, me to me, me to me. Hashtag me to me. Woo. To C U P. Oh gosh. Anyway. Anyway. So, so what's going on with these cannabis stocks? Wow. Right? You, you must be buying in the market because they're all up. Oh yeah. Yeah. You're taking the whole sector higher. It, it, you know, I got to tell you, like, this this is this re this is a perfect segue into the following statement. The market can remain illogical longer than one can remain solvent. So if you if you decide to take money off the table or pray tell short the market, mm -hmm. you're, you'll, you'll be talking to yourself now for sure. Yeah, you're, you're talking to yourself. Like you'll be having a serious conversation about well, yourself look at, look with at, yourself. Take a take a look at uh, huge, and I don't know much about it. Oh, you had to start there. Huge seventy cents. Seventy on cents. what news? A billion three. A billion three. Do we know why it's going up like this? So 900 million market cap. I'm just gonna start a pot company. You, you know what? My, my, my uh, got a friend over uh, broker, Eric West, and he was telling Eric me. Eric West, in no relation to me. Well, I mean, you never that know. we know of. You never know. He said to me, you got, you got to look at. Well, I don't, yeah, not till I'm ready. <laughs> What's going on? Nothing. Private inside joke. Okay, so so room. he just said you got to look at this. This is going to go here soon, and it did. Yeah, you know, but I, I uh, what is the next? Okay, so that thing came to market nine cents, twelve cents, seventeen cents, back to twelve cents. Everybody's like, yeah, ah, yeah, 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 it's yeah. over for you. Boom, thirty-two cents, thirty-four cents, fifty cents on Friday, seventy cents today. Edward, I don't understand the universe any longer. It makes no sense. Well, to me. you know, even Einstein, I don't think, understood the universe. So, you know what? I've started buying another company today. Remember Steve Gormley, who we had in here a, little, uh, a week ago? Full disclosure. You own the stock too now? I, I okay, bought, full I disclosure. Bought We're buying the stock out of the market. I think my average price so far is 12 and a half cents. Full disclosure, just saying. Why are we buying the J -U -J -U stock? JUJU.A. It's dot A now, but they're going to kill the dot A and cancel all those shares. I'm led to believe. That's what we're led to believe, yeah. Anyway, stock's been to 72 cents once, means it can go there again. You know what made me start buying it? I watched our own interview with Steve Gormley, the new incoming CEO, yeah. a week ago. I encourage you to do the same because if you listen to this guy and you look at the cannabis space and you know that they're going to cancel these dot A pref shares, which is what has been keeping this company back in large part, uh, then the chances of this turning into a positive experience for investors at current levels is very high in my humble opinion, though I am not to be trusted because I am biased and I own the stock. Um, anyways, the symbol, International Canna Brands is the name. The symbol currently is JUJU.A. Why was it called Juju? Because it's got good juju. We've already established that. But the reason it's called Juju is because the Juju stands for Julian Marley who they've got some kind of licensing deal with. So it's like, this is not an empty husk of a company that's gonna go from zero to hero in two weeks, from a zero. You're saying this is not an empty husk? This is no, this is, this is no, this is no empty house, Ed. This is a full house. Okay, got lots going okay. On. Anyways, so uh, 
Yeah, so I actually took a lot of the... Well, uh, I think we're going to... I think there are, uh, there's a bunch of meetings that they're having right now in California. And because I, I, I talked to... I wanted to talk to Steve today, and he gave me a sort of itinerary they're for They're having meetings the in California, are they? Well, I, that is have, serious. Are papers in order? <laughs> that would be a of making your talk. Have your papers? What were they doing in California? I'm not at the meetings. I'm here. You know, there is 50,000 dispensaries and growers in California before the onset of the rules January 1st right. this year. Right. And 40,000 of those individuals, entities, corporations, are no longer able to meet the listing requirements, the licensing requirements in the state of California. There are 40,000 cannabis operations in the state of California that are officially not able to do business. Really? Yes. You know one of the main reasons that they can't be compliant with the California licensing rules? Is they can't get through the testing regime. You know why they can't get through the testing regime? Because they haven't brought in enough money to make sure that they can grow marijuana without any pesticides whatsoever. So there's two things about this that strike me as singularly worrying as a Californian. I'm not, but if I were. A, you mean all this pot I've been buying at my dispensary for the last 10 years couldn't pass a pesticide test and that's why they're no longer in business? B, from a Canadian investor perspective who deploys capital into U.S. cannabis operations waiting for that day we know is out there when cannabis is going to be tea prohibited yeah. in the United States. Do you think there's a bunch of Canadians running around down there with big fat checkbooks looking to acquire operations who might have lost certification due to an absence of capital? I think so. I think so. Anyways, so... <laughs> You're, you're saying that some of these people don't have their papers in order. Some of these people have no papers. No, they. <laughs> they uh, no, my point is that there's a hell of a lot of opportunity out here, and I think Juju, 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 Juju is an excellent example of that, and that's primarily why I'm buying it. Full disclosure, owning it at oh, average of twelve point five cents. Oh. Yeah. Well. Hmm. So, uh, what do you so make that, of that? that, that well, look. What do you got to say about you that? Know, you know what? Look, the market cap. First, I'm going to close my trading accounts before I turn on the NDI. Do you know why? Yeah, you don't want anybody to do Well, I don't think everybody needs to see my dirty laundry. Give us dirty laundry. Hey, did you hear that Justin B. Marshall, our West Coast, Southwest Coast correspondent, put out an album last week? The Come Justin on. Marshall experience? Did you know that? I had no idea. I've heard, I've heard of the Jimi Hendrix experience. Well, let's just say we're going to we're going to be playing a little Justin B. Marshall for you a little later on in the show because Justin's bringing us a segment today, all the way from Monterey, California. So that's going to be fun. Uh, let's see who else have we got here. Oh, we talked to Darren Bonder from Inner Spirit Holdings, CSE listed ISH. He'll be here shortly. Early, a little bit earlier, we also talked to Ryan Brown, who's the CEO of North Bud Capital, yeah. which is a company that's going to be listing on the CSE coming up later this month. Anyways, so that's, and the symbol is going to be NBUD. So that's interesting. NBUD. 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 Uh, what else do we have today? What else do we have today? Edward, what's the big news in the cannabis space today? How about that Aurora by ICC Labs? ICC Labs is the Uruguayan operation. That Aurora was, did. Yeah. For what Aurora price? Bought. You know, I haven't checked at that yet. Let's take a quick look. What's, Survey what's the ticker? ICC? ACB. No, I, that's, that's Aurora. <laughs> well, that's the one you yeah. want to look up, isn't it? No, you want to look up the one that got bought. Oh, I want to look up the one that's doing the buy-in. All right. All right. Let's see. Have we written an article on it today? C A. I'll see who can get there 822 fast. up a dime. Oh! Okay, now I want to go to ICC. I want to go to ICC. ICC. Okay, I'm going to pull up the, the NDI. The, wasn't Dana Gilman heavily involved in that? Too? Dana was a big shareholder. And I think that's because... He probably still is. His firm, one of, his firm was one of the original underwriters. Is that right? He was one of the original check strokers. ICC, yes, indeed. ICC. That CA? Is that under the CA? Uh, look at this. Okay, ICC. now... ICC. While you're looking at that, whoa, there's the monster hand, Ed, you just missed it. Just about grab your right by the 
Juju. I, I, by, by the, look at this. Look at this. Look at this. Look at By the Juju. By the Juju. Catch by the Juju. Dot juju. A. By the Juju dot A. Yeah. Look at this. CSC, most, most glaringly, is yeah. up to 20 times return yeah. capital since January 1st, 2015. But, 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 So, yeah, where do you want to start here? Everything is up. If you're a cannabis stock, you're up. Unless you're not up, in which case you're completely useless. Yeah. Yeah, we, we saw some of the mining stocks uh, not. Yeah, well, guess what? Who would be buying mining stocks when this is going on over here yeah. in the green world? Yeah. Like, I actually blew out some of my mining stocks, even though it was too soon. They hadn't matured, they hadn't ripened. But I blew some out because I just want to get, I want more capital in the cannabis game, especially as 12 cent cannabis companies. Yeah. Like, did you, so when did you start buying Juju? You know what I did? I was out on uh, f Friday night. I was with Donnie Greco. Yeah. And uh, stopped Mac off. Mac Daddy Market Making Donnie G. And I, and I, I, I hey, Donnie, up, I know you're I watching. I called up a, my, a friend, a broker, I think about two minutes before the market closed because Donnie kept saying, these guys have a plan. They got this. They got that. Blah, blah, blah. And I bought some stock at t two minutes to four. At 11 cents. I paid 11, which was the high of the day. Oh. And it, it did trade down to oh. 10, 10 and a half today. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's, you know, nothing nothing goes straight up. No, no. Nothing goes but, straight but, up. But, uh, yeah. I mean, uh, look at these. Look at this. This huge. It's got a market cap okay. of almost a billion dollars. Yes. Now, the terms of the deal $1.95 per share for total transaction value of $290 million. Yeah. Aurora. Just swept ICC out for three hundred million. Let's call it three hundred million. Let's say three hundred. So good deal for ICC. I mean, this thing. Well, that, was but 50 it's le cents. it's legal in in uh, Uruguay. Europe. Uruguay was technically yeah. the first country in the world to be recreationally legal. But it's not a G seven country, so it doesn't matter to us in the G seven because we're got holier than thou entitlements issues. First world, you know. Anyways, uh, <laughs> look at this. Do you think it's a coincidence that South America has 420 million people? 420 South America, get it? Uh, cannabis. Exactly. Well, yes. If somebody is born and it goes to 420 million oh one, they just off that person for having the temerity to be born and ruin that 420 number. No, 420. Wow. That's the uh, wowie. That's the number in there. So congratulations, Aurora knocked another one out. So now they've got their South American strategy. Yeah. Uh, you know what the great thing about ICC is? ICC is uh, growing large scale outdoor hemp in greenhouses, like yeah. in poly greenhouses. Do you know how cheap that's going to be? You know how cheap that hemp source is going to be? I think that's amazing. Are you amazed, Ed? I'm, uh, I'm amazed. Pleased? Are you pleased? I, I got to tell you, Are you, I happy? Mean, you, you know, happy? <laughs> Happy. I'm um, so happy. What's the, what's the, is GLDN hyphen, or a colon? Oh boy, you're going to start no, 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 the buzz, I, I, harshing the buzz and talking about mining already? No, no, let's, let's not Already? Let's stay, let's leave that for the end. Okay, let's, let's. Let's keep up, up yeah. upward and happily, All right. smiley, smiles. We're in the cannabis space. We are getting wealthier by the second without even looking yeah. at the market. Yeah. Not if we're in the mining space. No. No. What happened? Well, we're, we're, we should have been mining our own business. That's what we should have been <laughs> we doing. We should have been, which is cannabis. Right. I know. See, we take our all, eye off the prize for even like two weeks and boom, what happens? We're down, I don't know, I'm down a bit. I lost a little money in my little mining foray. I'm almost 100% back into cannabis again. I've finally come to my senses. Somebody smacked me and I went, what am I thinking? Yeah, well, yeah. But anyways. So what are you thinking? What are you thinking? Okay, so there's one one of the main one of the main news items, one of the main market drivers, Aurora buying another company, ICC. We've had multiple CEOs from ICC on because they've had multiple CEOs. They've now been put out of their misery completely by Aurora. Uh, what other can catalysts? CanTrust. Did you see CanTrust with that deal? I N T. No, T R S T. Boy, nothing. <laughs> <laughs> nothing slow about Whoops. that. Clearly, they're Whoops. not a client or a holding. Moving right along. Yeah. 
Cantrust. So what? Cantrust was What's another going on? up twelve percent today. Why? 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 Well, actually, you th you you normally you'd look to a press release, and Cantrust actually had this to say that they have breakthrough brev bleh, breakthrough beverage group, the largest Canadian beverage alcohol broker of premium spirits, wine, and beer brands, executed a letter letter of intent with Cantrust. And they put in 10 million bucks. See, this is not 5 billion. Not 5 billion, but they put in money. They made it real by putting, writing a check. So this is why Cantrust is up a buck and change today because everybody sees that this is a real deal that's going to go in some direction. A company wrote a check as part of the deal. Hint, hint to anybody who might be listening. You're going to do a deal with a beverage company, get them to write you a check to demonstrate in no uncertain terms, the sincerity with which they intend to pursue a joint venture. Good advice, Ed? Do you agree with that? Why not? Are you on CBDs, Ed? No. No? No, no. I've been, I've on, I've been on the wagon since uh, Saturday night. You're on the wagon? Well, what are you doing here then? <laughs> is, I'm on the wagon. This is not for long. What time is it? It's 3.17. <laughs> We got an hour, well, uh, one I, hour and fifty I'm minutes be left on, of being on the wagon. Ed. I'm going I'm to be on the wagon here for a while. So uh, yeah, can trust. Look at that chart. Can what trust. See? What do you see that you don't like, Ed? Not well, much, I, I, like I, you, you know that? what I what I don't like is I wasn't smart enough to buy it when it was sitting there begging to be bought. Six eighty. You know what? It was there once. It'll be there again. You we got, we had volume you picking up. We had volume increasing right in here, starting. Yeah. We had a nice green candle with a nice. Tail, tail, and then and then another tail, and look at this. Just, just here you go, boys. Look at this tail. Yeah, and then Norman Paul announced his resignation. He's Eric Paul's brother. Who? Norman Paul. He was on the board of directors of CanTrust. He resigned. Why? Hey, better things to do. Bigger fish to fry. I think she was on the show recently. She was on the show. And that Chiron's I get catching a bid today. Is it? Yeah, I think buck twenty-three. You know why? Because probably if ICC got bought for okay. three hundred million, and Chiron's trading at what is it, a hundred million dollar market cap right now? Sorry, fifty-seven million. Yeah, it. it I don't it, think it, that's this accurate. Is, that's not accurate. Sorry, it's more like a hundred million with all the shares that are out there. I don't think there's as many shares there as you might think. You don't think? You don't think? Think? You don't think so. Hey. Anyways, you know what, Ed? Uh, have you ever heard of Inner Spirit Holdings? What's this? Public shareholder intervention sends Hydro Apothecary Corp. Oh boy, Ed. We've been away for a week or something. This is last week's news. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> Hydro Apothecary. Anyways, we talked with Darren Bodner from Inner Spirit Holdings, CSE listed ISH. Here's what he had to say. Welcome back to Midas Letter Live. My guest in this segment is Darren Bondar, President and CEO of Inner Spirit Holdings Limited, trading on the CSC under the symbol ISH. Darren, welcome. Yeah, thanks for having us. Darren, tell me about Inner Spirit Holdings Limited. What is your main business and how are you going to differentiate, differentiate yourself in this increasingly crowded cannabis landscape? Yeah, yeah. Well, Inner Spirit Holdings is our holding company mm -hmm. and uh, our ultimate business is in retail and franchising. Uh, we've developed this really cool um, cannabis dispensary brand called Spirit Leaf. Mm -hmm. uh, so we'll be opening up retail stores across the country, um, both corporate stores and uh, and franchise stores, which I think is uh, pretty unique to the market into itself. Okay, so it's uh, a franchise strategy within the cannabis retail space. That's correct, yeah. Hmm. So what has to happen for you to be able to sell cannabis in retail locations that are not necessarily affiliated with the provincial stores? Um, well, uh, look, we're based in Western Canada, so we've had a really great playground in, uh, in Alberta in particular, where our head office is in Calgary. So um, Alberta, we've granted uh, about 80 franchise locations, and mm -hmm. we'll uh, hopefully have about you know, 35 to 40 open in uh, Q4 here as uh, the pr province and municipalities you know, continue to, uh, to grant licenses and development permits. Sure. So Alberta's got a great history of private enterprise yeah. in the recreational substances business. Yes. Uh, I, I happen to have fond memories of Alberta <laughs> bottle shops where you can get great scotches and everything. 
Um, so then, is it your intention then to avoid being a grower of any sort and just to a source product from different people and brand it and package it yourself? Yeah, for sure. We're, we're not an LP. Um, we, we have a low capex strategy, so uh, that goes everything from the, the retail front where our franchise partners will be, uh, will be opening stores and paying for the cost of build outs. Um, and then uh, we'll be sourcing, uh, you know, sourcing products from LPs. Uh, and we've got some great strategic partnerships already in place with uh, with Oxley and Newstrike uh, as part of that uh, as part of that. Oh, okay. So tell me, how does the deal with Newstrike work? Yeah. So the Newstrike, uh, well, obviously everybody knows their uh, their collaboration with the Tragically Hip and uh, their their brand being Up Cannabis. So uh, we, we've done this great cross investment where 20% of our stores will be uh, will be allocated to Up Cannabis lounges. Uh, so we'll be, you know, sh showcasing up cannabis, comfortable place for customers to come and, and sit while they're waiting for waiting to be served, um, and a whole education piece there. So uh, education on the tragically hip and the history of Canadian music, hmm. uh, and also a really cool charitable um, aspect to that. We've uh, made a contribution to the Gord Downey Cheney Wenjack Fund. Um, so uh, it's all about Indigenous reconciliation. We'll be providing education in our stores about the importance of Indigenous reconciliation, and uh, designated a boardroom at our head office to um, you know to allow people to to use and uh, and educate. Hmm. Very interesting. Um, when do you expect your store? Well, I guess your store start opening October. 17th. Yeah, we should have uh, <laughs> we should have a handful open October seventeenth. Uh, we've got a number under construction. They've already been granted permits, and uh, we'll continue to to build out from there. Mm -hmm. So this is. Uh, from all accounts, the first franchise model in the cannabis space. Yeah. And so if I wanted to become a franchisee, how would I go about that? Yeah, it's a good question. So um, look, we're, the first kind of thing we did was we became a member of the Canadian Franchise Association, which is, uh, you know, kind of the governing and overseeing body of franchises in Canada. Um, so we were honored to be accepted. We're still the, the only cannabis, uh, cannabis member. Um, so that gives us a lot of reputability and uh, also holds us to a really high standard. Um, to become a franchisee, you'd apply through our website and, uh, you know, we'd have an introductory phone call. Um, you would, uh, you know, fill out an application and we'd go through a, a disclosure process and then uh, help you with all elements to, to set up your business from uh, filling out applications to securing real estate to HR, design, uh, merchandising and everything you need to know to be a successful retailer. Sure. So. I'm assuming then that the franchise locations are going to be limited to recreational marijuana only. Yeah, that's correct. Yeah, or purely okay. a recreational cannabis play. And so will each franchise owner have to become licensed by the provincial regulator? Yeah, so uh, every individual owner obviously has to get their own license. Uh, we assist with that process and then us uh, as a corporation also uh, need to have a, a parent license. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, in Alberta and BC that uh, is now open and we're uh, working through the due diligence process there. And I imagine Ontario's uh, not too far behind. Sure. So in the U.S., uh, I mean, the franchise model I think of that is not necessarily a franchise model is MedMen, who's essentially trying to, you know, create this impression of Apple stores in yeah. every major city and top locations and sure. to be a sort of superstore of cannabis products and knowledge and everything. Yeah. To what extent would you say that you emulate and also differentiate from the MedMen kind of model. Yeah, uh, well look, we're different. We're, we're Spirit Leaf and we have a different philosophy a little bit around uh, retail and branding. Um, Plus your shareholders can probably vote. Yes, our shareholders <laughs> can vote uh, as well. Um, so yeah, we're a completely different retail concept. Uh, we're really focused on the Canadian market. That's where our roots are. We know what Canadians like. We, we know how to retail. We know how to be effective franchisors. That's you know been my experience for the last 20 years. Mm. So um, yeah, I, I think we'll uh, do really well. And in the U.S. is pretty challenging as uh, you know, franchising has got some federal regulations. So uh, it's, it's something that you really can't implement down there. Right. Do you think that uh, the laws are going to sort of become more uniform across Canada as they roll out, or do you think that they're going to become even more different province to province? Yeah, I think they're going to continue to be different province to province, and then municipality to municipality. It's uh, it's a challenging national landscape to um, to navigate, but uh, that's kind of the advantage of the franchise model. You know, we've got franchise partners working uh, with local municipalities in Cold Lake or Lethbridge, uh, you know, smaller towns where a big corporation just you know can't get to. Right. So um, yeah, so you learn the landscape and, uh, and navigate the waters. 
So I guess Newstrike's going to provide you with a lot of your starting product. Yeah, again, we have to buy through to all the provincial agencies. Right. Um, but yeah, we look forward to carrying up cannabis product in our stores. And um, yeah, it's, uh, it's going to be great product and uh, everybody's going to be pretty interested to try it. Yeah, fantastic. Um, do you have any plan at any point potentially to become a grower of your own product? Uh, well, look, we actually have our own um, proprietary brands that we've developed from, um, you know, from a marketing and branding standpoint. So uh, a brand called Ruby, which is really focused on the female consumer. Um, we have a brand called Stone Selects uh, and a craft brand called Prairie Flower, uh, which is, you know, grown in Alberta. Um, kind of in line with our low capex strategy and our partnership with Oxley as an example. Um, they're providing us the inputs, so we're working on strain selection from the various uh, licensed producers um, that Oxley's partnered with. Um, and you know that product will come into us without us having to uh, build our own facility. Mm -hmm. So they're, they're our factories, if you will, and um, we've got a really close collaboration with Oxley to make that happen. Sure. I'm curious, what do you think will happen if let's say October 17th rolls around and let's yeah. say everybody aban abandons their friendly neighborhood dispensary and decides to all start buying off of the incumbent suppliers and they don't have enough cannabis on day one, yeah. what will you be forced to do to acquire cannabis? Yeah, well look, uh, everybody's going to have an equal chance, particularly in Alberta, to buy uh, to buy an equal amount. So if mm -hmm. there's only 100,000 kilos available and there's demand for 200, everybody will get pro rata. Mm. Um, I don't foresee uh, the cannabis shortage. I think it's going to take guys a long time to get their stores built and open and um, and I think the, the availability of supply will, will catch up to that and maintain that pretty quickly. Okay, interesting. How did you uh, come up with this idea and what made you decide to sort of pursue this franchise angle? Yeah, well look, I, I started my first business 20 years ago, which is a, a watch company that still exists today called Watch It. And uh, we had great success in the retail front and uh, expanded nationally using a franchise uh, system. So um, yeah, we, we kind of took, uh, took that model and took our existing infrastructure, uh, saw the opportunity of being a long time ca cannabis advocate and a uh, you know, medical patient. Um, you know, and amongst my close network, it became pretty apparent that if somebody was going to open a chain of retail stores across Canada, that it probably should be me. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah, we, we saw the opportunity and uh, took some early risks, and uh, yeah, here we are today. Sure, there's been a sort of propensity to open coffee shops and sort of set those out as potential places to learn about cannabis until the rules change and they can sell cannabis infused coffee. Yeah, yeah. Is that something that you would consider pursuing as well or is that just outside of where you're going? Yeah, you know, we might open a couple of lifestyle stores, but for the most part we've been really disciplined and uh, waiting for uh, the locations to get their permits before we open. Um, so, yeah, I think that strategy might work for some, but um, and as again, we might open some lifestyle stores, just uh, especially in Ontario, so people can get familiar with our brand. Mm -hmm. um, but soon enough, you know, in 30 to 40 days, we'll have uh, actual cannabis dispensaries open in uh, Alberta and Saskatchewan, and uh, BC's not too far behind. Yeah, well, it's exciting times. Yes, it is. Darren, that's a great introduction to the company. We'll leave it there for now. We'll come back to you in a quarter's time and see how you're doing. Thanks very much for joining me today. Yeah, appreciate it. Thanks. Sing, don't you think, Ed? Holy smokes. Yeah, I know. Another future winner. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. If you're in the cannabis space today, boy, you're a happy camper, aren't you? Yeah, yeah. Are yeah. there any losers in the space today? Should we have a look at that? I think that might be a little there bit. There always ridiculous. are. There's always a, there's a loser, a sucker born every minute, isn't there? Sometimes yeah. I feel and, like And as, as, I, as I sit here, and, and again, this is just to, just to throw it out there, I noticed Tilray is the lowest I've seen it today in a while. It's been slowly backing off. Maybe we're gonna find that everybody's rushing in here and then uh, maybe tomorrow morning there's a bit of a correction. So what, are you, everybody's gonna rush for the exits? No. Uh, I, don't, I don't know if rush for the exits. I just think it might be sloppier tomorrow. Right. Okay, looking at the... Uh, Any, anything out there that... Uh, no, I'm, I'm gonna, we're gonna go through the indexes now one by one, starting with the Midas Letter Large Cap Canadian Cannabis Index. Yeah. All companies trading okay. over five hundred million dollar market in cap in Canada. That's Which, why Tilray. No, not not all of them, because Huge isn't on the list. Well, Huge, you know, can you believe is Huge actually going to be on our large cap list? It's trading at nine hundred million now. <laughs> oh my gosh! I well, think, you know, the, uh, yeah. the portfolio adjustment happens in uh, September thirtieth. So here we go. Well, wow, that's well, all okay, I can say. So, so you know what, Anthony Durkach, if you're watching, we would like to have you on the show because okay. Yeah. Let's talk about how you're doing, what you're doing. It's very interesting to the whole world. The whole world wants to know. 
The whole, yeah. And our audience in particular wants to know, should we keep buying it? Now look, look at this list here. Weed, the big, the big boy, yeah. only up one and a half percent today. I, I say that because you, you, you know, there's a slew of them out there that are up 10, 15 percent. Well, look at Oxley up 13 percent here. Let's reorder this list according to who's up the most percentage wise. Oxley. Oxley's up 13 cents, 13 percent to $1.13. Did they engineer that? How did they do that? That's interesting. Uh, $1.13, up 13 cents, or 13 percent. Yeah. Like, that's I wonder how incredible. you figure that out quickly. Cantrust up 11.46% on their big beverage announcement. The beverage company wrote a check for 10 plus million dollars or a 10.23 a share. How much did they put in? 10 million. They put in 10 million bucks or they bought 10 million shares? Can't remember. Neither. Let's go look at the press release again and refresh our memories because we are senile. <laughs> What's your name again? Bob, Bob Dave? C Nile. Sadie. Sadie. What do you got, a brassiere on underneath C that rig? C. CD. 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 Yeah. CD. CD. <laughs> I know no, what word you, is in the word CD yet. We didn't ask you what personality traits you like. <laughs> or, you, or you exhibit. <laughs> exhibit. Seediness. Seediness. Uh, seediness. Okay. What does seediness mean? Resembling seed? In our business, that's a good thing. The seed is the foundation from which all good things grow. Especially market caps. E and even Co, fortunes. you know that one, don't you? Which one? Even Co. So Even Co, I bought at twenty-seven cents. What? Eight days ago? Nine days ago? And now I sold it today at fifty-four cents for a quick double. <sighs> not bad, eh? What does that ever happen for me? As long as I don't, as long as I'm not in the mining industry all the time. Yeah. I think I, I think I am a curse for the mining industry. And I'm sure there's not a few guys out there who would not agree with me. <sighs> no, seriously, I'll stop following mining. Here's the deal. I'm not looking at mining anymore. No more mining. And you watch. Now it'll go up. Now gold will, gold will go what? back it's to You know what? It's time you start mining your own business. Mining my own business, which is cannabis, not mining. Right. They should have legalized weed. First? I thought weed was legal when I was 14 years old. You did? I did. I thought it should be legal, and I thought the raw law was wrong and unjust. And I fought the law. And the law won. The law won. However, not entirely. It was kind of a trade-off, kind of a tie, actually, kind of a draw, if you will. I just decided to stop messing with the law, and the law decided to stop messing with me. It was a brilliant, brilliant transaction. Ed, you know what's going on here? Today we have, you know how many people we have watching right now on YouTube? There's like 105. That's uh, I think. No, is that uh, is that Juju going across at 13 and a half cents? 13 and a half. Dang. Dang. Look at that. 13 and a half. I'm up. I'm already up. Oh, sell. <laughs> it's not a mining company. I can oh. hang on to it for a few days. It'll probably go up further. Well, you know what half. <laughs> you know. You, you know. You oh, know. This what? is cannabis, Ed. Cannabis. The stocks keep going up, and they. Uh, and, like, do you know where the term? Not they, Canada. This is not stocks Canada. don't this go up forever. Canada, yes. You know where that term the stocks don't go up forever came from? Right. The mining industry. You Trees know don't grow to heaven. Cannabis, apparently, they do. Jack and the Beanstalk. Hello, Jack and the giant freaking Beanstalk. You know, I think that was originally a marijuana plant. What? Jack and the Beanstalk. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. yeah. We said that last week. Medmen. 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 Yeah, so uh, interesting. There's some interesting comments here that we're going to make reference to. Okay. I saw one. Where did it go? There's so many people ch chattering away here. It's kind of cool. Some of them are chattering amongst themselves. Uh, somebody's asking when I will start to sell my shirts. I'm the kind of guy who's going to give you the yeah. shirt off my back. You, you know what? You know what's probably going to happen first? What's this one? You know what's going to happen first? It's yours. He's first, he's going to lose his shirt. <laughs> no, Ed, I told you, I'm out of mining today. Like I got out. I, I got my own problem. I got listen. As soon as all my mining stocks yeah. became losers, I was I, like, "That's it." I'm I think uh, apparently there's a rumor here. going around that uh, Buffett heard that you were getting out of the mining space, and he was getting in. <laughs> He's like, "Finally, West is gone. These stocks hey, have got a hey, chance." Look, look at I'm talking about the him. seller of last. The last seller is out. The seller of last resort. Oh my gosh! Oh, look at this oh organogram. Yeah. Yeah, Organogram, 730. There's another, there's a company that's got a lot of compressed value, and I say that, full disclosure, they are a client of our media production and content traffic generation division, so I guess 
I guess my opinion can be bought. No, I'm just kidding. If it was a piece of crap, I would say so. Wouldn't I? Yes, you would. I, just because you pay me doesn't mean you're going to get a favorable review. Isn't that right, Ed? In fact, chances are you'll pay me and get an unfavorable review, and you'll be thinking, I just got, I just got burned by West. I paid him, burn. and he didn't give me a favorable review. Burn, what the baby, hell? Burn, Disco Inferno. Anyways, that's why we don't do check swaps. What can I say? Uh, let's see. ICC still halted. Yes. Are you guys live? Yes, we're live. Are you alive, Ed? Oh, yeah, he's alive. Uh, what else? What else? Let's Tilray, see. 8650. Let's put up a chart of Tilray. Oh, I knew you were going to make me do that. I, you know I what I'm going to do is I'm going to put up the big analytical charts here. Wait a sec. I don't even have it open. I wish I Just knew. Give me uh, one moment. Processing. Look at this. This is a new feature for us. Tells you when the stock market's going to close. I know. So you can get your bids in, Ed. Because we've, we've lost out on, you know what? I lost out on a trade on CanTrust one day because I tried to place my bid at 401. That, that doesn't work. You know what the price was? $7.53. I remember it because the next day it started to run and I'm like, I'm not chasing that stock. Oh. Here it is, $3 later. Anyways, what stock did you want to look at? Tilray. Tilray. Oh, yes. You like to start. I want to see a, I want to like see to start a, with uh, the ones we don't own. A one-day chart of Tilray. I actually right. looked back and I realized that I went long Tilray at twenty-six dollars. Did you? Yeah, I think I sold it at twenty-four. <laughs> no kidding. Why are you laughing? Because <laughs> that's Wait, buy misery high, sell low. Misery loves company. That's that's what we do. We buy high and sell low. Yeah. And how do we stay in business, Ed? I just <laughs> sure. this is why we have to take on clients because we keep bringing in the money, <laughs> investing in the market. And yeah. That's it. We need another client. Look at this Afria go here. I know, eh? Afria's on wow. fire. Maybe this time they are going to be the one who gets the big. So this, this, okay. There's a one day chart. Okay, that's what I wanted to see. So we've got. Okay, we're right near the lows. Look at this. This is a one day chart. So we had a nice, nice rally. Bottom, not so high. Yeah, this is a little toppy here. Just saying. A little toppy. Oh. Well, yeah, I huh. think so. I, that's a distribution pattern. Look at that. Distribution, huh? Distribution. Distribution, not accumulation? Yeah, yeah you know, I mean, if these things all were up 10% again tomorrow, we wouldn't be surprised, would we? No. I'd be shocked if they don't go up 10% tomorrow. That's what I'll be. Yeah, I, I think, uh, you, know, you know what? We know they won't, go, they won't keep going up every day. How do you know that? <sighs> that means... Nothing okay, does. Canex. Canex, another one of our company clients, stuck at 97 cents. You know when that sucker's going to pop? I'll bet. Again, they're a client, so this is not me projecting future value or market direction or anything. When their Jetty Extracts deal closes. Did you enjoy that salad, Ed? It was delicious. Chickpea salad. I had that tomato sandwich and it gave me heartburn. I need some uh, Rolades or something. Oh, Spirit Leaf guy. Remember him? He gave us some papers. Do you want to smoke one right now, Ed? You got any burp? No, I guess not. No, it's not October 17th. Put your hand, take your hand out of your pocket. Anyways, uh, so there's Tilray. <laughs> what do you, what do you, uh, what, what? Do you what, what's, what was inside, what was in that ham sandwich? Let's was take that a ham weed. sandwich? <laughs> yes, and with some lettuce on it. Get it, lettuce? No, well, actually, you know what I've been doing is I've been doing a generous 33 milligram dose of CBD each morning. A generous one. A generous one, like overflowing, a stopper that's just like. <laughs> yeah, you, you, you put the uh, dropper in your eyes? Got, no, in my tongue. Under, under the in tongue. In your tongue. Under you the tongue. Your <laughs> shoot your tongue up? Under the tongue, Ed. What do you uh, Shoot your tongue up? God. Jesus. Here, look I, at I, canopy I growth's intraday chart, Ed. What does that tell you? What's that tell you? It's a little you? toppy, too. If you don't, look at that. You know what we can okay, do? Okay, here, here's what I don't. Here, here's when we we peaked this morning, I'm, and I'm going by memory here. Uh, early on Tilray and Canopy Growth, then we've we've sort of come off, and we're going sideways. And I think this low is a little lower, but a nice rally. This, this, this little suggestion here for the viewer: if you're going to enter into this uh, in these positions, maybe just wait a bit, just just a little. Yeah. Until they go up high, really high. That's right. Then you can, then, you see that? Then you can that, just talk about the one that got away. That Molesky, what the hell's he doing? I had a smoke fish on. It was like this. It was so big, it was pulling the boat right under. But it got away. You know what? I, I, 
the fish was pulling us so fast that I shut the motor off. <laughs> <laughs> pull the boat around in circles. Yeah. Have you ever caught a salmon big enough that it's pulling the boat around? Yeah. Have yeah. You? Oh, several. <laughs> several at oh, once? I get three, four out of my, on one <laughs> hook. You're like this with your fishing rod. It's sort of whoa, like, you know, you know how in, uh, in, in chariots they have four horses pulling you? Yeah. This is like four big salmon pulling the boat. I can see that. Four across. I can see that. Can you imagine? We should go fishing. Right you know now? what we should do? We should have a fishing duck derby. It's duck weather. Duck weather? Duck yeah. weather. Oh, it is raining out there, Duck. isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> I, called up, I called up Dave Townsend once, and I asked about a gentleman, and he just said one thing. He said, duck. Duck, duck, go. Here we go. Uh, look, there's you watching me watching. <laughs> What's look at this. wrong with those guys? Uh, yeah. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> I don't know what's wrong with those Jesus. They, they do not seem stable. Oh, boy. whole bunch of news started here. MJNA. I was shoveling shit with MJNA for years. Yeah. Don't know what they mean by that. MJNA. What is that? What's the plan? When can anybody tell me they're playing FSD Pharma? FSD Pharma. You know what? I'm going to buy FSD Pharma. You don't. Oh, I'm saying I'm, they're saying they're screaming no from the control room. Don't buy it. I'm thinking of buying it. I'm thinking of buying it, Ed. You know why? You know, just so I can say I bought it, and if it goes up, then I'll be happy, and if it goes down, I'll be able to take the piss out of it every day for the rest of time. No, I wouldn't do that. That would make me a poor sport. That would make me sour grapes, and will I do that? No, I won't do that. Ed, you with us here? What are you watching, porn? <laughs> you look a little excited What the hell did there. you take today? On? Jesus. <laughs> What's going on? Yeah, Anyways. can you imagine, what if I was well, I'd be watching like, a little porn here. Would, would that be all right? I'd be like, hashtag me too. Watch yeah, out. Yeah. Watch out for Ed. Ed's, Ed's no, look, no. Ed's no, no. I'm, I'm watching, uh, I'm watching uh, Bay Street porn here. Bay Street porn. Huh, Simon Clear. What do you mean by your client? I mean my client. Yeah, your Jeez. client. Is it any clear for you? Our client. We have a company called... Global Financial Network that produces awesome video for companies that wish to pay us. And then we drive traffic to it through programmatic AdWord advertising. And that's how these companies go from zero to 200 bucks, bonehead. Okay, that's our client. Hello. What do you think, the stocks just go up by themselves? Oh yeah, look, I'll just buy this and it'll just go up because, oh, 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 oh. oh my gosh. Yeah. People, people underappreciate the power of promotion. They really do. You know what? If you're a CEO of a public company and you don't spend a significant budget on promotion, you are a loser CEO who is doing your shareholders a tremendous disservice. If you could have the cure for cancer, if nobody knows about it, what's it going to get you? Nothing. Big fat donut. Anyways, just saying. What else? Watching Tilray porn. Same thing. Good one, Maple Mike. That is a good one. What else? What else we got here? Ooh, Maple Mike says we're awesome, Ed. <laughs> wow, that's a, that's a... Uh, let's see, what else do we want to talk about here? You know well, what? look at, look at, we, we talked about ACB and it's only up a dime. You know what we forgot to do? We forgot to continue with our look at all of the other indexes. Oh. Okay, so nothing in the large cap is down, everything is up. Let's go to the small cap index. For those of you who are wondering, the small cap index is the index of Canadian listed cannabis companies that trade on a market cap between 100 and 500 million as of the last day of June last month because that's we rebalance the portfolios we rebalance the indices on the last day of each quarter so if you see something on here that doesn't belong here or belongs on another one it's because the balance next balancing day of these indexes is September 30th Ed correct Thus starts the fourth quarter on October 1st. Yes. That's the way yes. it works around here, isn't it? Yeah. Q4 coming up. So, yes. Look at huge here. Up 20 cents. 40% on the day. A stock goes up 40% in a day. A guy walks into a bar with a pig. And he says he can count <laughs> his pig <laughs> can do both. Jesus. Uh, that joke you know makes what? me you laugh. You know what? I think we'll be <laughs> moving right along. Look at Namaste. On a tear. Whoa, what was that? Sorry, missed that. Signals throw to Jason Sue. Oh, okay. 
You yeah. know what? We'll come back to the indexes in a short bit. We're on a bit of a tear here. It's time for us to give a bit of a listen and a watch to our West Coast, Southwest Coast correspondent, Justin B. Marshall. opportunity of spending time with Gavin. Gavin's a real mover and shaker in the California cannabis industry. Today we are in East of Eden Cannabis Company, which is soon to open, I would say in about another month. They'll have a good opening, yes? Yes. Yes. Spectacular opening. A spectacular <laughs> opening, I'm sure it will be. And the name of your umbrella corporation is Grupo Flor? A uh, Grupo Flor. Grupo Flor. Yeah, Grupo Flor. We're in a, you know, in Salinas, California, um, we are in a predominantly, and not by a little bit, Hispanic community. And so we wanted to have a, a name of our company that was uh, reflective of the pride we have in our local community. And uh, that's really where Grupo Floor started, was to build a, a, a coherent supply chain in our local backyard and then use it as a springboard for the rest of the state and then globally thereafter. Very nice. So this dispensary, can you tell us a little bit about the layout? You'll have the customers enter through the door, and if they're returning customers, they'll go one way. If they're new customers, yeah. they'll go into a, a small room here. Yeah. And then as they enter, then we come into this beautiful, beautiful large room. You'll have TVs up on the back wall, and you'll have bud tenders probably in which area? Where will you have it stationed? So glad that you asked that. We're going to do something a little different. Okay. Um, one, sales associates, not bud tenders. Ah, sales associates. Okay. And one of the things that is interesting about cannabis is that when you, when you stop for a moment and you think, most of the cannabis users in five years are not using cannabis today. Fact. Okay. Hopefully a fact, unless this is a huge failure. Okay. That's what the, the, the better minds in the industry think about cannabis. The question is, cannabis is a new, it's a new thing. It's not like a beer. There's one way to drink beer. You don't, you know, there's not topical beers. Right, right. right. You don't in vape inhale a beer. Sure. You drink a beer, you drink a bottle of wine. You smoke a cigar. Cannabis is different than those things, which are, by the way, uh, in their better iterations, like a connoisseur product. Cannabis is indeed a connoisseur's product, right? Oh, yeah. You said yourself you're a connoisseur. Of which I am. Indeed. So there are people who are like that, but then there are people who are not, and they've never had any exposure to it. And at worst, they're coming to us with a lot of cultural baggage of hatred and enmity towards cannabis in our culture. So we have a bit of an education profile or, or, or task ahead of us. Right? And that's why when a new patient comes in, if they're returning, they don't have to go into the room to talk about their background, who they are, what they're looking for, how we can best serve their needs. Yeah. Um, they can just come in. By the same token, I find, you know, I'll tell you, my, I hate when I go to a car lot and I see the salesman coming from across the parking lot. Uh -huh. I have a whole narrative, man, this person's gonna try to sell me and talk to me. All I wanna do is look at the cars. Yeah. We're trying to create an environment of exploration. So we're not gonna have bud tenders behind a counter. We're gonna have bud tenders on the floor with iPads that are complete baskets. And if you have a question, they'll be there for you. But they're not gonna be tethered to you. You are an adult. Okay. This is adult cannabis. You can search around, you can look, you can point, you can ask questions, there's references. And there's plenty of people to answer your questions. But the idea is to encourage exploration. Very interesting, very interesting. I also love the name of the store being in reference to John Steinbeck, mm -hmm. who's a local hero That's right. of ours here. That's right. John Steinbeck used to spend a lot of time here in the Salinas Valley. And, That's right. Um, and let's go to our next topic here about building brands. This Smokestacks is a, a product that we could pick up here very soon. And I know it's available in about 30% uh, 30 of the dispensaries in California. Yeah, I'd say 20, 20 to 30, pro probably in that, in that range right now. It's difficult to say because um, as dispensaries come online, as your, your viewers may know, California became recreational in the beginning of this year. Yes. And so a lot of shops have to opt in. Not all of them have. We went from 
you know, not to be a Debbie Downer, but we went from 3,000 shops as an addressable market to 300 in a month. Right. So that swath is being built back up, but it's fair to say that we're in 20, 25, 30 percent of those shops right now and that's expanding while they're expanding we're expanding so that's why it's hard to get a direct beat on it well it's very nice that you were able to open your own shops too I know this is one of seven others or six others mm -hmm. so far and you're moving fast and it's very nice that you're also able to grow your own product so you're able to be completely vertically integrated Correct. and you've been self-funded up until this point taking a little bit of investors right. money and helping them continually grow um, your future plans may consist of going listing publicly in Canada and, and doing what some of the other uh, California cannabis companies are doing. Right. Um, I know you've been approached by some of the big players out there and you're just kind of sitting back and, and really taking a good evaluation of the whole industry right now. As the Coca-Colas of cannabis, the brands are being built and you're a big part of that. And your legal background, you were a lawyer before uh, this and then you were a cannabis lawyer and so you have a lot of connections a lot of connections in politics a lot of connections in the cannabis industry and it seems to me that you're the coach bringing everyone together and that's what I'm hearing on the street when I talk to people they all look to you as the leader and the one that's pretty much telling people to stay in their lanes do their part and let's all do this together and and that's the way the mm. big things get done um, I, I also, you know, follow a lot of other American cannabis companies like Ianthus and MPX Bioceuticals. They've already gone public. Yeah. And I look at some of these other companies that are in California currently, like Canex Capital and um, Canna Royalty. That's right. And they're already public. And you, I, I would imagine your evaluation, you already have about a million square foot of cannabis that you're able to grow at this time? Uh, we are at... One about a million, a little bit more than a million and a half square feet of, of cannabis that we have access to and have control over. Wow, that's huge. That's huge. Yeah. So you're one of the biggest players in California at this time. And Shh. <laughs> okay, <laughs> well, we you know we're really honored to be here. And then let me ask you this, Gavin, as we're in this facility here, it seems like a, a complex unit where you have offices. You have a production facility. Yeah. You also have a store. You know, and so this is and it's right next to the highway. That's right. It's right next to the busiest Starbucks in town. That's right. You know, it's, you could not have a better location, and it, it is location, location. Well, as much as I'm a lawyer, uh, I have to brag. My my business partners are real estate, commercial real estate brokers. Uh -huh. So when we started this company with the goal of establishing real estate leasing, uh, commercial leasing of all manner. Um, we saved the better pieces for ourselves. And so sometimes I talk about Grupo Flora as a field. Mm -hmm. And uh, we've got a lot of different players in that field. And we don't have control over all of them. We try to steer clear of that and try to really create an open meadow. So we say we've, we've created a big meadow. And we have a couple of choice flowers in that meadow. Nice. That's how we think about it. Very nice. Very nice. It's really more of a, a strategy of... You know, having started cannabis companies before and been involved with it, I really try to stay away from a, a strict vertical control model for two reasons. Um, one, it's not as flexible as our horizontal um, structure that we have in our company where we have a whole supply chain, but different companies comprise pieces of that supply chain rather than one vertical company. Um, it also doesn't invite collaboration. Mm -hmm. and one thing that I know about cannabis, having been a, a, you know, involved in it for some time and representing so many people, is cannabis, at least black market particularly, are lone wolves who have to go it alone. They're a tough breed. If you think about growers, they're a tough breed. They have to you know, evade law. They have to evade other people attacking and take, stealing from them. It's a tough life. And they're, cannabis folks are a proud people, and they don't want to fit into the larger structure of traditional uh, 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 culture, right? right? So how do you create an environment that's going to invite those kinds of personalities in to co-create something with you? And it can't be an ownership relationship. It has to be a collaborative relationship built on respect um, and, and trust. Uh, and, and, and frankly, if you think about black markets all over the world, whether you're dealing with cocaine, heroin, or guns, mm -hmm. you know, at the end of the day, it's not about 
politics, it's about trust. Um, also, I wanted to talk about the many moving pieces on the board that are constantly changing. The laws that you have to constantly adapt with on a local, state, and federal level, and, and then also be able to keep your shareholders happy, be able to adapt to the future, be able to build brands that will potentially go global, you know, while you're focusing on California at this time. And even brand building in California is strange because as we mentioned in Southern California, certain people want some things. Mm -hmm. Up in Northern California, we like the more different, you know? Yeah, and so, yeah. you know, it's, it's kind of a wide area. It is. And that's what's exciting about this industry um, even today is that it's such a broad playing field that um, it invites a lot of, of creativity and you know a lot of chutzpah to be able to manage it because it's 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 almost too much quite frankly but it's 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 really exciting the opportunities especially what you just talked about with with boutique yeah yeah um one last thing i wanted to talk about was technology um i know that you and i also follow very closely what's going on in israel and they've been studying the cannabis plant the endocannabinoid system for quite some time yeah. on a very high level no pun intended um, and I was wondering what you thought about some of these new, perhaps, inhalers that mm -hmm. pass the brain-blood barrier very quick. Mm -hmm. Some of these new vaporizers that we're able to use that, you know, really help the patients get the medicine they, that they need on an yeah. instant level and a constant level where it's, it's always the same. Yeah. Um, I mean, what a dizzying <laughs> array of products, you know, unlike beer or wine. There's right untold amounts of delivery mechanisms for cannabis, yeah. right? Yeah, like we talked about. Yeah, the ones you're mentioning now, um, I think that that's the first spark of truly industrialized application for cannabis that we're gonna start seeing. Um, we're moving away from the joint, right? We're moving away from that, and you're seeing people start to gravitate towards it. Um, I, you know, having tried some of those products you're talking about, I've but not recently, I found them very harsh, like the inhalers. Yes. I found them too harsh for me. Uh -huh. um, I like inhalation of vapor over combustion because I, I think that burning carbon is gonna be outdated m mode of, 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 uh, of use. Um, I'm still kind of a caveman. I like flour myself. I do too, and I, don't, I will never move away from yeah. the joint. You yeah. Know? Yeah. I'll be smoking joints forever yeah. if I yeah. can help it. Um, but, but I do, I, I, if, if I may, I do like vaporization. Yes. And I found that to be uh, um, an area that we're going to be exploring heavily is, is vaporization of flour yes. uh, and as opposed to oil until they can get all the cannabinoids into oil without tearing it apart. Yes. It's my only, uh, oil is huge, don't get me wrong, we're big in favor of it. But it's the, it's the one area that I personally as a consumer, I like the entourage, the whole effect of a flour. To me it just seems more natural and beautiful. Thank you very uh, much. James, Ed, and all our fans around the world, thanks for tuning in. Smoke weed every day. Hey, how'd you like that? Thanks, I, Justin. That, that was, was awesome. very good. That was very good. You know, if you'd like to uh, listen to Justin B. Marshall's new album, you can go to Google Play Music and you just search Justin Marshall Experience, and it costs all of $10.49 Canadian to buy the whole album. And it looks like there's like a seriously five, seven, twelve. There's like an hour's worth of music there, and it's got nothing but five star reviews. So what? What does that tell you? What does that tell you? Actually, he's a multi-talented guy. What can we say? Good work, Justin, on both your. Well, he's got uh, all 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 two reviews are fives. Yeah. Yeah. This is an amazing album. So much talent, you can feel how much love went into it. Oh, there you go. So check out Justin's album. Now, Ed. Cutting straight back to the chase here. Juju, yeah. since you started blabbing about it, is at 14 cents. You're a one-man market moving mother machine. Anyways, yeah. almost uh, Look at this. Almost had to throw a quarter in the jar there. Yeah, now are we... Uh, market closes in one minute and two seconds. Wrong. 59 seconds, 58. Yeah, there we go. You want to watch it close? So, so I just noticed too, Tilray, I... I, I I looked at the chart. The last four days have had four longer wicks on the candles than I'd like to see. And that this this may be saying that there's some substantial resistance here at that at that ninety five ninety three uh, dollar level or wherever that number is. Uh, yes. Yeah, I, I don't like to see. 
I like to see tails if I'm bullish, and I like to see wicks when I'm when I'm bearish. Okay. So here's the intraday chart. If we look at our advanced charts here, the blue is Tilray intraday. The white line down here is weed. So this is this is uh, canopy growth trading in Canada. Look at the absence of vol volatility in uh, weed relative to Tilray. Yeah, Isn't yeah, that I, interesting? I, I, uh, wow. What does that tell you? What does that tell you? Yeah, what does that tell you? Uh, well, I think there's a lot less shares in Tilray for one thing. It's okay. a lot easier to move it around, right? Like, right. There's there's a lot more stock in uh, in uh, weed. Oh, there is. Here we go. Oops. Oh, Stockwatch. <laughs> Jeez. There, free ad for Stockwatch. There you go, Stockwatch. Yeah. You need all the help you can get. What can I say? Yeah, I don't know what what what, what are these lines over here on the. Uh, I don't know what that index is over there. So, so tell me this, Ed. If you're looking for a lower risk, large cap cannabis stock, and you're a fund manager, yeah, which stock are you going to buy? Which well, stock? Weed, at least weeds, just buy. Weed's got a lot. You know, I think we we've, we've concluded there's so much more going on inside weed right now. Although Tilray has just started signing deals with Juniors left, right, and center. Left, signed right, a deal center. With Supreme, yeah. yeah, signed a deal with Namaste. Though Namaste is probably heading towards a billion dollars now. Right. Actually, let's check that out. I bet you Namaste is getting close to, let's see, where are we? Oops. Namaste. Oh, shoot. Wait a sec. I don't want. Ugh. Full view. Here's Namaste today. Three, up 44 cents to 320. Yeah. 15.94%. That's incredible. Like, look at that. Yeah, that, that, look at that RSI over 80. I don't know. That, that market cap, 759.67 million. They've got a big party coming up this week in Montreal for their, their uh, pledge party. Now, this is, this is interesting. And Sean and, and crew, you're going to have to just forgive us for our comic sense of humor. But the idea that your shareholders would pledge their stock to hang on to it is quite a source of amusement for us because yeah. there's no binding to that, though it is a good reason for a party, and we agree with that. Will we be there, Ed? Are we going to go? We got no. invited. Do you want to go to Montreal on Wednesday night? Is it Wednesday night, guys? I can't remember. Somebody tell me. Somebody tell me what's going on here. I don't think I can make it. No way. Okay, so let's look at the small cap index. FSD, we have to make mention of this again because it's just so incredible. Now at 73 cents, up 46% in a day. Okay, okay, whatever you guys are doing, please stop. <laughs> no, don't stop. Keep going, keep going. All right, so they're the biggest winner in the day. InMed Pharmaceuticals, 32% uh, up 25 cents in the day. That's just a m miracle to me. Oh, no, InMed. InMed is not a miracle, it makes sense to me. That's right, I'm confusing it with another one. Liberty Health Sciences up 17.82%. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah. Amazing. We're going to try to make them a client, just so you know. Why? Because we love them. Supreme up 12% today. Look at that, 228 a share. Long-suffering shareholders breathing a sigh of relief and going, can this be it? Are we the next billion how many dollar are on this? How many are in this list here? Uh, it says more at the cap? bottom. Are there more? Yeah, there's more. Let's see. Oh, there's some. There's some. One, two, red ones. three, Look four, four five, six, yeah, seven, six, eight, nine, six ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, thirty. So there's thirty-one companies in the small cap index. Technically, huge should not be in the small cap index because it's over five hundred million. Namaste should not be in this index. It's over five hundred million. I can tell you that at two twenty-eight a share. Supreme is, should not be in this index. Definitely Ianthus is not in this index anymore. This index is going to look really grim on the 1st of October. Well, maybe there's a bunch uh, from the other index moving into this category. <laughs> could be. You know, could be, actually. Okay, so let's see what is down. So Neptune Technologies, we don't really know anything about them. They haven't responded to invitations to come onto the show. 
What more need we say? Nutritional high, perennial sucker of hind tit. No offense, David, but what can I say? That's the truth. MYM Pharmaceuticals, buck 20, kind of dragging their asses lately. Ceneva, I know Ceneva is down to 17 million bucks according to their last financials, and they've got like two major uh, facilities under construction. So probably that one's starting to suck hind tit because there's a financing coming. Everybody knows it. Vivo Cannabis, Barry Fishman's operation, formerly Avatis, is uh, dragging a little today. But it's hard for all these things to maintain the full, the full view and weight of everybody who's watching. I mean, people are gravitating towards the most robust, volatile stocks. They want yes. to see, in this market, people want to see fireworks. And if you don't have fireworks, they're going to move on to somebody who does. That's all there is to say about that. Let's see, Isodial. Isodial back trading? No. Is it? No. Could it be? Where did I see Isodial? Oh, it's unchanged. It's unchanged. It would be at the, it would be between the ups and the downs. Okay, there it is. Yeah, right. Okay, unchanged, so probably still halted. Okay, now let's take a look at the venture index. So these are all the venture listed companies. Notice, again, mostly green. I'm going to reorganize the list to reflect who is up the most. Chiron is up the most. I think that's a closeology on what happened with ICC Labs yeah. today. Yeah. Just because they're in Latin America too, maybe sure. Chiron's going to be bought next. Just saying. They used to be a client. They are no, are no longer a client. So we can say whatever we want about Chiron. What can I say? I still love them. Um, but yeah, I bet you that they are potentially somebody's Latin American strategy takeout. I think that was Mark and company's plan all along. Anyways, Oxley Cannabis Group. Now, you remember just a short while ago, we looked at Oxley and the price was $1.13. It was up 13 cents or 13% on the day. Yeah. Now look at it. It's now tw up 12 cents. Up at, it's to $1.12, up 12 cents or 12% on the day. Right. What's going on? Well, it's, it's, its base is a dollar, so every penny is 1%. Jeez, is it that simple, Ed? You know, I feel like you just took the wind right out of my sails. Like, I was I working with Comet Gold, I, and I find out that I'm holding Comet Fluff in my hand. Like, what Cosmic Fluff. Cosmic Fluff. Look at our friends over at GTEC are up 4.12%. GTEC is not a client, but they are friends. Right. Up 4.12%. Aviva Gen. Hmm, they got in the cannabis game, did they? Look at even Emerald Health is up 5.58. Everything's up. Let's see if anything's down in the ventures. Maple Leaf Green World, not okay. Yeah. Scythian halted. Nuvera, what? Why is there not available? Not sure. Anyways, Vitality Products don't know what they do. CO2 grow down to 19 cents. Box Strain Technologies. Don't really know them, Acasti Pharma. Okay, we've exhausted our interest in the venture space. Look at this. Last one we're going to look at is the CSE. Now, these are all the cannabis companies trading in Canada on the Canadian Securities Exchange, which if you don't know it, if you're in America, you might have to punch in CNSX or CNX or something. It's one of it's our it's our most junior exchange. But interestingly enough, of all the indexes, of all the four indexes, the CSE has performed the best. CSE listed huge, probably up 46% is single-handedly <clears throat> taken it a lot, a lot of that distance. Terrasen up 404. 4.04%, 19 cents to 49. Ianthus on fire up 11.61% to 846. Liberty Health, MPX, Green Thumb Industries, $20.12. Hello! We don't even know what they do. They're another one of those guys who declined to respond to our invitations to come on the show and tell us what's going on. Right. But uh, let's see. Okay, so we have one more guest today that we're going to cut to right now because we're running out of time. Time is the one thing that we all have exactly the same amount of as left, which is the rest of our lives. That's if you're alive. If you're alive. If you're dead, then you have no life, you no time. You're timeless. You're back in the pool. <laughs> Ryan Brown is the CEO of Northbud which will be trading this month on the CSE under symbol NBUD. We talked to him just a short while earlier. Here is what he had to say. Welcome back to Midas Letter Live. My guest this segment is Ryan Brown, CEO of North Bud Capital and North Bud Farms, Inc. Welcome to the show. Thanks for having me. 
Hey, Ryan, so tell us what is uh, North Bud Capital and what is the difference between North Bud Capital and North Bud Farms? So North Bud Capital is a, an incubator fund that we started about 14 months ago. Mm -hmm. uh, our goal was to provide early stage seed level capital um, to companies that were operating within the ancillary space, uh, primarily in the United States. Um, you know, unique uh, companies backed by savvy uh, operators that had uh, identified a, a niche for their products or services within the uh, ever expanding uh, cannabis space. So we uh, raised some capital uh, about a little over a year ago and have uh, deployed uh, the majority of it uh, over the last year um, to help incubate and develop these companies um, as they've all moved on to subsequent uh, financing rounds um, based on our initial capital investment. Right. Okay, so essentially a royalty player then, much like uh, Ianthus or Canna Royalty? Um, no, we went uh, straight equity. Uh, we, uh, we got in early with a lot of these companies. We uh, secured ourselves equity positions um, anywhere between 7 to 15 percent, um, leaving a little bit of uh, you know, equity on the table for subsequent financing rounds, um, knowing that we were in, uh, we were in early um, and all of these uh, companies have subsequently um, gone through Series A and Series B financing rounds, uh, which have provided us a uh, really healthy return on the initial capital that we put in. Huh. Okay, so you t started with some capital and you've grown it, and now you're going to go public? Um, well, the, the company that goes public uh, late in September is the uh, our Northbud Farms project. Uh, Northbud Capital was a seed investor in Northbud Farms, uh, which was a spin-out of uh, Tetra Biopharma, uh, a late-stage ACMPR application that we took over from Tetra uh, and are uh, financed and are developing that. Um, on our uh, agricultural land located just north of Ottawa. Mm -hmm. um, expect, to be, uh, expect to have that online by the end of the year, uh, early 2019. Okay, and you're a co-founder of Tetra Biopharma as well. Correct, yeah, I uh, was a co-founder of, uh, of Tetra Biopharma. I'm still a, a large shareholder and avid supporter and uh, we look forward to working with Tetra um, as a uh, potential cultivator for the um, cannabis required for their uh, ongoing pipeline of uh, pharmaceutical products. Uh huh. Okay. Interesting. So, who are most of your investors? Like, who put the money uh, in? Our North investors. Uh, so, for Northbud uh, Capital, our investors uh, range from um, you know accredited investors, um, people who have uh, invested with us in the past. Uh, we've got a few small uh, U.S. institutions that have put some capital in as well. Um, uh, myself, um, you know, my, my partner Andre Odette, uh, we uh, financed a substantial portion of it, uh, which um, you know we've um, we believe that putting our money in first and putting our money um, in a locked up position in these uh, in these companies provides uh, other investors with a certain level of security. Um, shows that we've got some skin in the game as well. Sure. And so, since uh, since inception, what has been your return on investment? Uh, for Northwood Capital, we're uh, we're sitting at approximately 120 percent um, over the 14-month uh, period. Um, important to note that none of the companies we've invested in have uh, seen any public market liquidity yet. So this uh, appreciations all occurred within the private uh, within the private sector. Um, us as a seed investor, uh, and then these companies follow up with independent investments from uh, in Series A and Series B rounds, which we typically do participate in as well, uh, but usually in a, a smaller um, amount than our initial investment in the company. I see. Okay. And then so your your IPO round coming up, is that something that our audience could participate in if they're accredited? Uh, yeah, certainly they can, they can reach out to us. Um, okay. we, uh, we have a little bit of overflow from the, uh, the pre-IPO round. Uh, we expect to list the third week of September, so they would have to uh, get in contact with us relatively quickly. Um, but we see uh, a tremendous value in Northbud Farms, um, not only as a company, but also as a, an investment vehicle or an investment opportunity for investors looking to, uh, to get into the space. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you, Northbud Capital has a 15% equity stake in Northbud Farms. Correct. Okay, and uh, what is the growth profile in terms of the product that Northbud Farms is, is developing right now? Or where is it so at? Cycle. So our um, uh, late stage ACMPR application that we took over from Tetra, uh, we've just began construction of the of the actual facility. Um, previous to that, we had done all of the uh, infrastructure implementation. Um, we're working with a, a very well respected construction company uh, out of Drummondville, um, and we expect that to be uh, complete construction to be completed uh, by the end of 2018, possibly early 2019. Um, 
I'm ready to submit our um, confirmation of readiness evidence package to Health Canada. Um, our focus moving forward from a cultivation perspective um, is to really develop unique cultivars that can be used by our pharmaceutical partner Tetra Biopharma um, as well as companies, uh, other bio pharmaceutical and food grade companies looking to break into the space. Um, we believe that we've got access to a very interesting and unique um, genetic portfolio um, that will set us apart from a lot of the other uh, kind of late stage applicant, early stage cultivators that have had to rely uh, on a lot of the existing genetics uh, in the space. Oh, interesting. Okay, so is that by your association with Tetro Biopharma that you have the access to this specialized technology? Um, it's not the technologies per se, it's more so our, um, our network and some of our investors um, from overseas that have access to unique genetics. Um, one of the benefits for uh, North Bud Farms is being licensed under the Cannabis Act uh, will qualify for the uh, ability to bring in genetics from outside of the existing LP, um, LP system, uh, which is a, a real benefit that the government uh, has included um, in, the, uh, in the Cannabis Act for the next wave of, uh, of cultivators that enter the space. Mm hmm Interesting. So, sounds like you're really pursuing quite a multifaceted sort of investment and operational model under Tetra Bio, or, sorry, under Northbud Capital. Um, so, is it your intention then to continue to add portfolio holdings like uh, Northbud Farms, in which you hold a significant stake? Yeah, Northbud Capital um, will operate as a completely independent entity from Northbud Farms. Um, my focus is going to be on Northbud Farms, um, the CEO of Northbud Farms. I've put together the board of directors, the management team. Um, my energy is going to be focused on that, and we've got a team around us that will continue to raise capital and invest capital uh, to really help incubate uh, the next wave of, uh, of companies breaking into the space, um, ancillary companies. Uh, primarily, um, we're not opposed to investing in U.S.-based cultivation, uh, but we've yet to find the, the right fit for us. Sure. I see you have an equity stake with LiveWell Farms, who was also, or LiveWell Canada rather, who was also invested in by Canopy Rivers, the investment arm of Can Canopy Growth. Do you have access to invest alongside the pipeline of investments of Canopy Rivers on a go-forward basis? Um, we don't have any uh, form any affiliation with uh, with Canopy Rivers other than being co-investors in LiveWell. Um, LiveWell being an Ottawa-based company, um, us being an Ottawa-based company as well. I'm quite familiar with a lot of the uh, principles of LiveWell, and uh, we thought that it was a uh, a good entry point for us um, as we kind of develop that um, more market-focused um, aspect of our portfolio. Um, previous to that, we had only invested in private U.S. companies, uh, so that was our first uh, private placement, kind of pre uh, pre IPO um, investment. Okay, how much money has been raised into Northbud all altogether? Um, Northbud Farms, we've raised uh, approximately five and a half million, um, putting us at a, a market cap of twelve point seven five million post money. Um, so when that lists uh, at the end of the month, we believe that that provides a, a unique opportunity and a unique, um, you know, relative value entry point for investors looking to uh, participate in the space. Uh, Northwood Capital, we raised approximately four million, um, which, as I mentioned, we've uh, we've grown uh, by approximately 120 percent uh, in the last 14 months. Wow. That's fantastic. Okay, so what are the uh, big value catalysts in the rest of 2018 and 2019 that are going to drive value into Northbud when it goes public? Um, we believe that um, our our unique platform being located uh, in, in the province of Quebec uh, on uh, you know with low cost electricity, low cost uh, land um, acquisition um, will allow us to cultivate uh, these unique cultivars at a significantly reduced uh, price. Uh, to a lot of our, uh, I guess, a lot of the competitors in the space. Um, we believe as the consumer product goods segment continues to expand that we're uniquely uh, positioned to be a uh, developmental partner for some of the small and mid-sized food and beverage companies that are looking to break into the space. Um, focused on pharmaceutical grade production, um, we believe that that's a very close parallel to what you're going to see um, from the requirements from a food grade perspective as well. You've got two highly regulated industries that are kind of at a cross section now between food and cannabis. And so we believe that having a clean slate and being able to tailor our business to this 
um, rapidly um, developing segment of the market um, could provide us with some very unique uh, value that we can add to um, either existing companies in the space or those looking to break into the space. So obviously the uh, legalization of cannabis October 17th, uh, we see that as being the next uh, catalyst that will really attract and draw new entrants to the space that are going to be looking to team up with um, like-minded companies. Uh, we've got a very uh, sophisticated board of directors with uh, Fortune 50 uh, experience, consumer packaged goods, um, regulatory as well as uh, pharmaceutical. Um, so we believe that we've got a lot of value to add to our potential collaborators um, as we move forward. Mm -hmm. All right, Ryan, that's fantastic. That's a great introductory uh, story on Northbud. We are going to come back to you when you go public and see how you're making out. Thanks for your time today. Great. Thanks a lot for having me on. Appreciate it. Bye for now. I like it. You're still watching your porn there, aren't you? I'm watching my... Uh... <laughs> Northbud's going to go public. Do you own any shares? I don't own any shares. I would like to own some shares. Oh. Ryan, if you're listening, we would like to own some shares. Pretty please. Send us subscription agreements and we'll buy some. Anyways, he did say that there was some left in their pre-IPO round. If you're an accredited investor, you can write to us and maybe we can get you into that deal. If you ain't accredited, ain't no way it ain't ever gonna happen. However, it has been my experience that a lot of people lie about their status as accredited investor just so that they can get themselves into a private placement. Wouldn't be the first time. Just saying. Anyways, so, as of today, Ed, what is your favorite cannabis opportunity to buy? Well, yeah, you know, I mean, look at you. You look for charts where you've got a, a basing period, and then you got a a, a, a curl up, a hmm. curl up, a curl up, a as curl opposed up. to a roll up. Yeah, I don't you know. Like, there's a lot of them out there, and but but I didn't think Tilray's action was that great, considering hmm. where it closed relative to where it was today. Hmm. It may open up in the morning. It might be time to sell it. Hmm. Time to sell Tilray. Just for a trade, yeah, to just take that money off the table, and if it backs off sharply, buy it back. I suppose that's true. So, have you been watching Eve? I'm going to pull up a chart on Eve. I have to disclose, and it's it's not that I am uh, boasting, but I had a positive investor experience with this company called Eve, yeah. and. The stock was 27 cents two weeks ago. I sold it for 54 cents today. Backed off to 51 cents so far. But uh, look at that, uh, look at that. What do you say about that little candle, Ed? Hey? Yeah. That's pretty attractive, eh? Well, you yeah, had a big, big wick. Big wick, oh! I'd prefer to see a bigger, a bigger tail. A bigger tail. Yeah, You're well, more look, of a look, tail man. You're more of an ass look, man. Look, look it, look it. <laughs> like that I'm trying, one in the to, I'm room. trying to look at 211 million shares out, and it's still rocking up like that. 36 percent up today. See, that's what I, that's that's pretty big. Now we're going to pull up a chart of Juju because why? Everybody here at the office has been buying Juju today. You know why? Because we're impressed with the company and its story, and the fact that that A might actually be off of there soon. And if it, the A is off of there, does that mean all the PREF shares are canceled? And in which case, how many shares will be outstanding? It says 85.7 million shares out now. We're going to do a little bit more research on that. But, yeah. uh, you know, here's a 12, 14 cent cannabis stock. I mean, man, come on. Yeah, I, li I like that, that saucer with the volume here and here. Like, we've had big volume, yeah. you know. Well, that's, uh, that's indicative of a new sheriff in town, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, and we know that this company has been, uh, is being taken over by a new group, isn't it? And we know that the well, we, acting we, CEO is down in California right now talking to companies left, right, and center on acquisition mode, don't we? Is that what we know? Well, we, we, we think we know that. We think we know. Do you think you know what you're talking about, Ed? I don't think I know what I'm talking about. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I can't believe people watch this. We don't know what we're talking about. Yeah. No, of course we do know what we're talking about, but sometimes you have to read between the lines to figure out what it is we're talking about because we're not allowed to talk about what we're talking about. You know what I'm saying? You understand? Right. Nudge, nudge, wink, wink. No, wink, wink, nudge, nudge. No, that's not it either. 
Like, were we here to tell you that FSD Pharma was going to go from $0.09 cents to $0.70 cents in a matter of one month? Did we tell you that? No, we didn't, because we didn't know. <laughs> See? That's what I'm talking about. Anyways, boy, this is getting disconcerting. Um, what else do we have to discuss today, Edward? You know that tomorrow we're going to have our, uh, our main man, Bruce Linton, here. He's going to talk to us about the Canopy Rivers Go Public transaction. Okay. That's going to be fun. Phenomenal. Canopy Rivers is going to be a client, as is Canopy, full disclosure. How do you think they got to $70 a share? It wasn't us. <laughs> Was it, Ed? Um, Tilray to get $100 per share before the inevitable capitalization. Now, here's an interesting thing. We want to quickly mention our, our chief economic sleuth, Benjamin A. Smith, wrote an interesting story. Will Tilray get to $100 a share before the inevitable cap raise published on September 4th? Where is Tilray today, Ed? 85 bucks, I believe. How far till $100? 15 bucks. You think they're going to do a raise at 100 I don't know if there's anything magic in a hundred, but I mean, I would. Hundred bucks a share. How many companies have done a raise at a hundred dollars U.S. Yeah, but just a need to get to a hundred. What if it only gets to ninety-eight? That's my point. <laughs> What's my point? That's my point. See what I'm saying? You got to sometimes read between the lines because we can't talk about what we're talking about. You know what I'm saying? No. Okay. Never mind. Anyways, back to the show. Uh, we had Brendan. Uh, Brendan. Sorry, Brendan Kennedy here from Tilray. He was here, when was he here? He was here about three weeks ago to talk about Tilray. If you go look at Ben's article, you can read between some lines there and get an idea of where Tilray is going. Uh, what else do we have happening? We got to touch on our mining companies today. So we saw a press release come out from Golden Ridge Resources, which we had been buying and we had been very excited about. And then the press release came out today, two holes were released. The numbers look just like the first poll, and it seemed yeah. to go whoosh right over everybody's yeah. head. Everybody thought they were looking at the same press releases three weeks ago, which was not the case. There's still five holes at least at the lab to come in this drill program that we know of, if not more. If not more. If not more. And so, uh, did you sell any of your Golden Ridge, Ed? No. Okay. No, no, I did not. Neither did I. So Golden Ridge is not what we're selling. No. Sokolman Iron. Down to 16 and a half cents today. Did you sell any of your Sokum and Iron? Oh, uh, I did some time ago. Aha. Did you buy it back yet? No. No. But I, I did I, not I sell any Sokum in yet. I think it might be a good time to be a bit of a pig. They're, they're going to they're gonna look at it. on. Anyways, that's our mining uh, <sighs> commentary for the day. Now back to cannabis. <laughs> <laughs> Moving right kidding. along. Moving right along. Yeah. There is a picture of what <laughs> this guy's obviously in the mining industry. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Poor bear. Yeah. No. Pooh bear. Pooh bear. Pooh bear. How about that bear? Okay. So everything up today in the cannabis space, lots of new new opportunities coming down the pike. No sign of the bloom coming off the rose anytime soon. Uh, I don't know. I, I beg to differ. Well, but you've been wrong before, right? Sure. <laughs> Uh, people wanted us to, to comment on the Haiku Canopy merger that was approved last week by uh, Haiku shareholders. We don't have a comment because the company is now 100% owned subsidiary, or not 100%, but close to of Canopy, and we don't know what their plan is. We haven't talked about that with them. We might broach that subject with uh, Bruce Linton tomorrow if, if he wants to, but we're mostly here to talk about Canopy Rivers and their go public transaction coming up soon. Uh, what else we got happening tomorrow? We have, oh, on Wednesday, we're having Cam Batley is going to be here from Aurora. Nice. We have, uh, who else is here? We have uh, George Scorsis from Liberty Health is going to be here with us this week. Huh? Huh? George Scorsis, Liberty Health, yeah. on 14% or something crazy like that today. Who else do we have? We have lots of great cannabis CEOs joining us this week. Oh, Brad Rogers may be here from CanTrust because he wants to come in and talk about that deal they did with Breakthrough Beverages, wherein Breakthrough actually made a pretty sizable investment into the company, taking the company's stock higher. Who else we got? We got, oh, we have the CEO from Eve is going to be here this week, if not next week. Who else do we have? We have, oh, it's time for John Fowler again. John, if you're watching, come on in. It's time to talk to you again. We're going to have Sean Dollinger here from Namaste at some point to talk about their pledge party coming up this week in uh, Montreal. I believe it's this week. 
Who else is going to be that here? Does mean everybody brings back, buy some pledge and they, they polish furniture? That is not what that means, Ed. Okay. Anyways, uh, namaste on fire lately. Like, oh my gosh, where does this all end? Who else are we going to have in? We have lots of interesting guests this week. If they're in the cannabis space and they matter, they will be here. That's generally the way it goes here every week, in case you haven't noticed. Got a ton of great people coming in. Got a ton of new opportunities in the cannabis space that are not yet public. So tune in this week every day at 3 o'clock if you want to get on the inside of the inside of the inside. Just saying. Anyways, if you like the show, please hit the little like arrow. The thumb goes like that. That's a like. This one is a not like. Somebody keeps hitting the not like every day as soon as we start. When I find out who you are, I'm going to get it. Just saying. Anyways, um, so yeah, join us. We'll be back tomorrow. Thank you for watching. Goodbye. Da 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 da